What you choose to wear shouldn't stop you from getting on the bus, going to the hospital, doing pretty much anything. But if you live in Quebec, that's about to change. In October, Quebec passed Bill 62, a law aiming to create religious neutrality. People who cover their faces in public will be barred from both giving and receiving public services. Effectively meaning Muslim women who wear niqab and burqa can't work as doctors or teachers and can't do things like get on the bus, take a book out from the library, or pick up their kid from daycare without uncovering their face. If this sounds vaguely familiar, it's because efforts to ban religious symbols in the province have been in the news for years. In 2013, the Parti Québécois government tabled Bill 60, also known as the Charter of Values. It included a proposal to ban public servants from wearing prominent religious symbols. While promotion of the bill suggested it would affect workers equally, it would likely have had a bigger impact on people of the Sikh, Jewish, and Muslim faiths. After the Parti Québécois was defeated by the Liberals in 2014, the new government introduced its own proposal the following year. This time, the focus was on banning covered faces. On October 18th, Quebec's majority Liberal National Assembly officially passed the bill into law, with 66 votes in favour and 51 against. Premier Philippe Couillard defended the law by saying it's about communication, identification and safety. The government said there will be a mechanism to ensure that people won't be subject to this law because of their faith, but it's unclear how that will work, since the law now appears to be targeting one particular expression of faith. This could just be viewed as a typical case of overreach. As part of Quebec's pursuit to rid itself of tyrannical religious relics, secular politics have become tyrannical. But this ban isn't about religion. It's about one particular religion. It's absurd to argue that these women are a threat to Quebec's secular culture. It's estimated that there are fewer than 100 of them. But their image is powerful because they represent the kind of difference some Quebecers are uncomfortable with. And the Liberals know it. The amount of political effort that has been thrown behind this law reveals less about the crusade for secular society than it does about which group is politically palatable to target. Islamophobia conveniently hides behind the shield of secularism in Quebec. And many Quebecers have argued that Islamophobia has a particular history of acceptance there. Last year, a forum poll found 28% of Canadians viewed Muslims unfavorably. Quebecers polled at 48%. Considering the impact Bill 62 will have, it's laughable to hear Quebec Justice Minister Stephanie Vallée insist this new law is part of the pursuit of the neutrality of the state. This law will only fuel Islamophobic sentiments, similar to what happened when Donald Trump was elected U.S. President. We cannot afford to be so politically correct anymore. If we've learned anything in the last year, it's that you can't just shove those sentiments back in the box. This law sends a message to these women that choosing to express their faith in this way is an affront to Canadian values, that it's okay to treat some people like second-class citizens, and if they don't look like us, they don't have a right to the services they fund with their taxes. In a year where six Muslim men were killed because of their faith in that very province, the Liberal government has chosen to send a message that Muslims will never belong unless it's on the government's terms. Not only does this law feed the insidious strain of Islamophobia that has taken hold in Quebec, it puts thousands of public servants in the awkward position of enforcing systemic discrimination. The union representing bus drivers in Montreal has already said that drivers don't want to be responsible for enforcement. Many Quebecers have made clear they don't support this law. Protesters covering their faces descended on the metro in Montreal the weekend after the vote. This legislation may not withstand a legal challenge. But either way, it has the added cruel effect of making the small, yet very visible, group of women act as a proxy in an ongoing identity war they didn't ask to be a part of. So no, this isn't what religious neutrality looks like. This is what Islamophobia looks like. <laughs>